I'm pleased to give you an update on the UK Prospective Diabetes Study. Uh, this is the longest running follow-up of a randomized control trial in type 2 diabetes. So those of you who are familiar with it may remember that the 20-year trial randomized patients to intensive blood glucose control with sulfonylurea insulin or in overweight patients to metformin compared with a conventional primarily diet policy. At the end of that trial, it showed unequivocally that better glucose control could reduce complications, that is microvascular complications, but did not impact macrovascular complications. Once the trial finished, we embarked on a 10-year post-trial monitoring study in which all patients who had survived continued to be followed by the UK PDS team. At the end of that 10-year period, the results showed that not only did the microvascular protection uh, maintain itself, but we now saw emerging risk reductions, both for myocardial infarction and for all-cause mortality. So this emerging risk and continued risk protection, we term the legacy effect. That is a continuing benefit from early intensive glucose control. Today, I want to bring you new results because we have a further 14 years of data to add. In this third phase of the UK Prospective Diabetes Study, we have engaged with the NHS, the National Health System, which is countrywide in UK and free at the point of delivery, which allows us to collect administrative data, that is hospital episode statistics and death registry data. By combining this with the clinical trial data and the post-trial monitoring, we have been able to extend the follow-up to up to 44 years. So we have asked the same questions again. If you treat early, intensively with sulfonylurea or insulin, do you see continuing benefit? And the answer is unequivocally yes. We see 11% fewer deaths and 25% fewer microvascular events. That's kidney disease, loss of vision, the things which scare our patients so much. So this is a legacy effect which appears to be enduring, and I'll come back to that. But we also had the trial comparing metformin. And in the metformin trial in overweight patients, the legacy effect for metformin also continues. We see a 31% reduction in heart attacks and a 25% reduction in all-cause mortality. That's a quarter reduction. Amazing figures with absolutely stable legacy effects. So the question that we have to address is why is this continuing benefit seen? And my view is that what we're looking at is a hyperglycemic legacy effect. I believe that early hyperglycemia really does set the pattern for the rest of a patient's life. We're seeing irreversible pathophysiologic changes occurring either through uh, oxidative reactions, inflammatory uh, promotion of the pathways, uh, or indeed epigenetic changes, which seem to set people on a permanent path to be at increased risk. And improving their control at a later time certainly reduces their risk, but never gets them back to the minimal risk that's possible if you treat early and treat well. So I think there are big clinical messages here. Metformin clearly has an advantage. It's now used in non-overweight patients as well as overweight. It's extremely inexpensive. And our health economic analyses show that it is not only cost effective, it's cost saving. Uh, the health economic analyses that we've conducted in parallel also show that these intensive therapies extend life. With sulfonylurea insulin, it's the order of a year extra. And with metformin, it's an order of 2.7 years extra. Now, uh, that might not seem a lot, but in terms of clinical trial data, this is almost identical to what is seen with a lifetime simulation for the heart protection study with simvastatin, where they saw uh, extensions of life between one and two years. So I think we have a clear message. If you identify and treat people with type 2 diabetes early, if you can avoid hyperglycemia, you can avoid putting them on a high-risk trajectory for complications. This doesn't preclude the use of other drugs. We're not saying that metformin and or sulfonylurea are necessarily first-line drugs, 
but they are there up with the other drugs as potential complementary agents, certainly in people who don't yet have complications. And I think it's cementing their place for many years into the future. Thank you.